morning. There we are. Welcome to St. Mary Magdalene and our celebration of the second Sunday in Ordinary Time. You're celebrating with us here today or in your cars or at home on live stream. We welcome you to the unified body of Christ. We will get, begin Mass in a few min minutes.
Good morning, everyone. It's a joy to be able to celebrate this Mass with you. If you are here for the first time, we want to welcome you to St. Mary Magdalene to make it your home away from home. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Have mercy on us. 
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. I did not call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again, the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said. You called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you, my son. Go back to sleep. At that time, Samuel was not familiar with the Lord because the Lord had not revealed anything to him as yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Getting up, and going to Eli, he said, Here I am, Lord. You called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, Go to sleep. And if you are called, reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord came and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, speak Lord, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The word of the Lord. to do your will. Here am I. 
I come to do your will. I sing of your justice, I sing of your peace, I sing of your faithfulness and love. I chant your praise in the midst of all your people. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the body is not for immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. John was standing with two of his disciples, 
And as he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what was said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come, and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, and the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah which is translated Christ. There he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. There's only uh, one bar in the microphone, but I'm not going to let fear stop me because that's part of my homily. Each one of you that is sitting here has been given a gift, talent, dreams, goals that God wants you to accomplish that he planted in your heart. And in this world, you're the only one. You're the only person that has those talents or those dreams and those goals. But it's very easy, especially in light of what's happened, to, for fear to hold us back. Fear maybe of being burnt again. Fear of what if people don't accept me? Fear of failure. There are so many people who bury their dreams and their talents and their gifts when the world needs their healing, when the world needs their ability to create hospitals, when the world needs their ability to erect orphanages or even create businesses that will have Christ at the center. You're always gonna have plenty of opportunities to be afraid. But here is the main message for today's Sunday's homily. Don't bury the gifts the talents that God gave you. In scriptures, in Matthew 14, it says that you don't light a lamp and put it under a bushel basket. What that means is this. When each one of us, when we gave our life into Christ, when we got baptized, that meant that God lit your lamp. He needs you to shine in this world. He needs your dreams to come to pass. He needs you to answer his call. And when you answer his call, it's not like you answer once and then that's it. There are going to be many stages in your life. But here's the key. You can't wait until your fear is gone before you can take action. Because by then, it might already be too late. So let's examine what happened in the first reading with Samuel. Here was Samuel whom God gave gifts and talents and dreams. Now Samuel could have buried his dream. Samuel could have buried his gift into the ground, but he didn't. He said, here I am, Lord, your servant is listening. And Samuel actually in the Old Testament became the last judge. He was the last judge who appointed the first two kings, King Saul and King David. And in the first reading, if you're paying close attention, God made sure that because God planted this in Samuel's heart and he fulfilled his mission, that his words were going to be effective. There is no one in this world that has done anything great without having any fear. Many of you, especially the older ones or even some of the younger ones, I see young people that have so much hidden potential that has so much hidden talent but because they shrink back they're afraid 
You can't let fear keep you from answering God's call. Now, however, once you find the courage to step forward, God is going to make sure that you have what it takes, that he's going to do for you what you can't do on your own. Let me share with you a story about Jeff and Allie Davidson. A few years ago, they were getting ready to be married in the church. But then Allie was always gung-ho about being a gladiator. So right on her wedding day, she entered a competition. She went to the competition, left the competition, went home and just made it on time to walk down the aisle to get married to her husband, Jeff. A few months later, she won the Grand Gladiator Championship. Now they could have just used that money and said, you know what, we can do whatever we want with it. But Adley and Jeff understood that God called them to do something. And so they created Camp Gladiator with only a few cones and 40 people in the parking lot. Now, if you look them up on the internet or on Google search, they are the fastest fitness program with over a thousand trainers and over 300,000 lives that have been touched. Now, you might think here, well, what's the big deal? Well, these people surrender themselves to God. And in fact, they even created a camp gladiator for kids using gospel values so that kids, boys and girls, will understand that their gifts and their talents are not meant to be hidden. They're not meant to be buried. They are meant to be used. Folks, life is short. And I know what it's like to be afraid. If you have been burnt, if you have invested and you lost a lot of money, if you invested, whether it's in a relationship or in an actual financial thing or whatever it is, when things don't work out, it's very easy for our brain to say, you know what, why even try? Or maybe some people have approached your oh, father, you know, I feel that God has called me to do this and that, but I'm afraid. What if people don't accept me? What if people talk behind my back? Can I tell you this, and I say this with the utmost respect, if you're doing something important, somebody is probably talking behind your back already, and that's okay. Some people are probably talking behind my back. And that's okay, because one of the most important things that I've learned in this world is that not everyone is going to be rooting for you. Not everyone is going to be saying, yeah, go, go, Ali, go, Jeff. And that's okay, because some of these people that are not for you were meant to help you get to where you're supposed to be. Now, see, our tendency is when we pray to God, God, please, I hope everything goes well. I hope everything goes smooth. But that is not how the law of the universe works. If Joseph had not been betrayed by his brothers, and if his brothers hadn't hated him and sold him into slavery, he would not have stepped in to become the second person in command next to the Pharaoh. If David hadn't met Goliath, the big giant, then he would not stepped in to become a king. If Jesus had not been betrayed by Judas, one of his disciples, then there would have not been any crucifixion. And without crucifixion, there's no redemption. Without redemption, there is no salvation. So don't be too worried about who is not for you or who's on your left, who's not on your left, who's on your right. No. What you have to worry about is running your own race. What you have to worry about is being aligned with God and making sure that you are in a state of grace. It doesn't mean that you're going to perform perfectly, but what it means is if you fall from grace, that you take advantage of the sacrament of confession and you continue to fulfill the mission, the dream, the goal that he has planted in your heart. When you look at someone like me, it's like I've become a priest, but it's not like I'm done and I've accomplished my goal. Some of you right now, especially the young people that are here, God has different plans and missions for you in the different stages of your life. Some of you are made to probably giving you talent to make a lot of money, not for your own good, but maybe to create a community without poverty. And then after that, maybe after a few years of working, maybe God's going to call you to the priesthood. Or if you're a woman, maybe to be a religious sister. Or if you're married, maybe to become a deacon. We have to remain open and we cannot let fear of people, fear of getting burnt again, fear of failure hold us back from accomplishing what God has entrusted to us. 
I'll give you another story by the name of Peter Demos, who is from Tennessee. I believe Father Preston and some of our seminarians were just there. Father uh, Peter Demos was born into a hospitality industry with his family running restaurants, but he became a lawyer. At that stage in his life, he did law, but he knew that something was missing. When he was 40 years old, he surrendered completely his life to Christ, and he knew that God was calling him to go back into the hospitality industry. He then created the Demos restaurant, and he's extremely successful. But what's amazing about him is this, and I'm going to paraphrase what he said in an interview. He said, if God wants my business to fail, and that's part of his plan, there is nothing I can do to stop that. What I'm trying to do is to be aligned with God, and I want to work as hard as I can because if he wants my business to succeed, and if I'm not working hard, God will find somebody else who will do the work for me. And we hear this up and down the centuries and even in the biblical heroes of our time. In the gospel reading, we know that John was born into this world to point to the Lamb of God. John could have buried his dream. John could have said, I don't want to do this. What if people try to kill me? What if people hate me? What if they get mad at me? The very things that very many, especially young people, are so afraid of, especially when it comes to social media. What if people dislike me? And it becomes actually a torture where in their mind, this becomes the most important value, when in fact, the most important value is this. Don't worry about what people are saying about you because they didn't create you. They didn't breathe their life into you. Worry about what God thinks about you. Make sure that God and you are in light alignment. So when you're not living right, as we heard in the second reading, there are more people that are worried about, well, what if she doesn't like me? What if it, no, who cares what others say? I worry about what God says about my mission in life. Trust me, there are moments when I wake up when Jesus said to many who's been given, to more who has more gifts, many more will be expected. There are times when I just wanna kind of settle and be like, you know what, I'm already a priest. I have a, an apostolate, I care for many souls, but that's good enough. But did you know that God still tells me, no, your work is not done. I want you to go big, not for yourself, but to reach as many souls as possible and there are times i'm like but i just want to chill I just want to go to the beach lord and he's like yeah yeah i get it bro yeah my son padre francis but what i'm telling you is sometimes i do get scared too but you know what did you know what is as you answer yes to god every single time or higher than 90 percent it does get easier you can fear will no longer hold you back look I didn't know I was gonna come here, okay? Every time in my stage as a priest, but if I had not come here, I would have not met the wonderful people you guys are that are here. I would have not developed the friendships that I have developed here. Now for those people that are watching, I know some of the people, for St. John Fisher, I love those friendships and they will remain forever, but my point is this, at every stage in our lives, we can't be allowing fear to hold us back. Just like Peter Demos, just like Jeff and Alan, just like John the Baptist and Peter and Andrew and John and Samuel that follow Jesus. My prayer for all of you, especially the young people that are here, is that you are going to say yes to God. That whatever dream or dreams or goals and missions, maybe it's writing a book, Maybe it's writing a novel. Maybe it's being a movie director. What? Maybe it's creating a hospital. Maybe it's creating a, a being a leader of a farm. Whatever it is, just make sure that whatever you do, that Christ is at the center. Because when Christ is at the center, he won't take away things from you. Christ is a multiplier. He will multiply your gifts. He will multiply your resources. And he'll even give you divine connections and divine resources. So my brothers, and sisters in Christ. Stop burying your gifts. I'll end with this last story in Matthew 25. There was a business person, I think Matthew 25 verses 14 to 30, who was going on a trip and he called three of his servants. 
To one servant he gave him five talents. To one he gave two, and to the other one he gave one. When he came back, the one who got, was given five talents multiplied it and gave him back to the owner, ten. And then the owner said, the business person said, well done, my good and faithful servant. The second one he had two, and he multiplied it, and he gave him back four. But the last one, this is what he did. He didn't even spend the money. He buried it in the ground. And notice what the owner said. The owner represents God. He said, you wicked servant. You knew that I was going to reap. What I'm just going to sow where I don't reap or reap where I'm not going to sow. Then why didn't you invest it? And look what he did. He said, get this wicked servant and throw him to the darkness. So what is the message for us? This person was thrown into the darkness not because he had an affair. He was thrown into the darkness not because he embezzled money. He was thrown into the darkness not because he abused people. He was thrown into the darkness because he buried his gift. That's how serious the call of God is. So as you go through this week and as you go through the year 2021, whatever your gifts mission and dreams are and if others make fun of you oh you never that's never gonna happen come on be realistic you're, you're you're kidding yourself your business already failed what no if god gave you a mission and you know it deep within your heart then you better make sure that you don't hide it that you don't bury it because he's going to take it away and give it to somebody else and if we follow in the footsteps of samuel of this guy peter demos the example jeff and ali peter james andrew all the disciples that have gone before us, then we are going to accomplish what God has called us to accomplish and make this world a more beautiful place so that others, everyone will know that Christ is our victor. Amen? Amen. all rise to profess, profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. It was spoken through the prophets. I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. Amen. We now present our needs and those of the world to our loving and compassionate God. That the leaders of the church may continue to spread God's word with the joy to the people of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all governments of all nations seek just and peaceful solutions to conflict, especially in our own nation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who are suffering from oppression or violence may draw strength from the suffering of Jesus and have the support of caring people, we pray to the Lord. Lord to that the scriptures teaching, teaching that our lives and bodies belong to the Lord may increase our reverence for all human life and awareness that only one God can give it or take it away, we pray to the Lord. Lord to that unity among Christians and their collaborations for good of the society may increase, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. 
that those who have died may rest in the peace of the heavenly kingdom, especially Lupe Gonzalez, Jose Antonio Melendez, Domingo Vargas, Rita Carls, Antonia Makalama, and Osana Sumuni, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For all those intentions that we each hold deeply within the silence of our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. For both vocations of the priesthood, consecrated life, and diaconate life, that more men and women will dedicate their lives for the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Loving Father, we believe that you see us and that you hear us in following the footsteps of your judge Samuel. Let us always say every time we get up, here I am, Lord, your servant and listening, that we may fulfill the mission that you have entrusted to us for the salvation of souls. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Brothers and sisters, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and giving thanks he said a blessing gave the chalice to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup We proclaim your death, O Lord Until you come again Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son His wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Mary Magdalene, and with all the saints, on this constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of a reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, his auxiliary bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For those who cannot be with us physically, I want you to join me in praying this act of spiritual communion. My dearest Jesus, I believe that you're present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and you're not myself only to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Just, just a reminder, we'll have three lines. The middle line will only be for receiving communion uh, through your hands, and the left and the right will be both.
the Lord of wind and flame. I will tend the poor and the lame. I will set a feast for them. My hand will save. Finest bread I will provide to their hearts be satisfied. I will give. Set your 
Let us pray. Pour on us, O oh Lord, the spirit of your love. In your kindness, make those yet nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart. Through Christ our Lord. Do we have any announcements? I know I'll be, my only announcement is I'll be on vacation. I'll be going to Temecula, then Pacific Beach, then San Diego. So um, I'll keep you guys in my prayers and uh, I hope you have fun as well, fun in a good way. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Have an awesome Sunday, everyone. Hallelujah, hallelujah is our song.